Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are answering the question, why don't we have solar powered cars? So we're going to look into, you know, is it possible to have solar powered cars today? And would it be possible to use solar power for cars in the future? So we need to understand the sun, and the sun has all of this energy, and some of that energy actually makes its way to Earth, and so we've actually measured on the outside of our atmosphere how much power is hitting that surface. And so the solar constant, I use quotes because it's not actually constant, but it stays close enough, we get about 1.36 kilowatts, about 1360 watts, of power hitting one square meter. Uh, so that's how much power we're getting from the sun. And so if we look at the cross-sectional area of the earth, uh, we can take pi r squared, get the area that that solar energy is hitting, that solar power is hitting the earth. And so we have pi r squared, the radius of the earth being about 6,370 kilometers. And so we can multiply our solar constant by our area of the earth and we can find out that at any given moment, we have about 173 trillion kilowatts of power hitting the Earth. Now, the total energy consumption for the entire world, all people combined for one entire year, is about 190 trillion kilowatt hours. And as you can see, these numbers are fairly close, but with different units. So what this means is, if you were to take all of the energy hitting the Earth's surface from the sun for about one hour, you'd just need a little bit more than one hour's worth of, of power hitting that surface uh, to get to power the entire planet for a year. So there's an abundance of potential there, right? There's so much energy uh, that we could possibly get from the sun uh, and enough to power the entire globe uh, in a little bit over an hour. So it's pretty wild, the potential there. So why don't we use this for a car, right? Well, let's look at a car as an example. And so we're just gonna take a vehicle like a Tesla Model 3 and say, what if we covered the entire roof of a Tesla Model 3 with solar panels? So looking down on a Tesla Model 3, it's about 4.7 meters long. It's about 1.85 meters wide. So we can multiply those together, get the area and say, well, if we covered the entire uh, roof there with solar panels, that entire uh, area above the car with solar panels, we have 8.7 meters squared of solar power uh, that we could we could generate from. And so if we take that 8.7 meter surface area and we multiply it by our solar constant, 1.36, well, in a perfect world, we could get about 12 kilowatts of power hitting that Tesla, about 16 horsepower. Now, a question that I had is, if you had 12 kilowatts of constant power, how fast could you potentially drive indefinitely assuming the sun is shining on your car? Uh, so you can do the math for that and figure out the actual speed with those 12 kilowatts of power. How fast could you travel at a constant speed and never run out as long as the sun is shining? And you can travel at about 100 kilometers per hour or about 62 miles per hour in an ideal world. So this is actually kind of cool, right? Like if everything is perfectly efficient, you could travel, you know, close to a highway speed forever when the sun's out, which is pretty neat. And most people are usually driving when the sun's out. So, you know, not a terrible thing there. And of course, if it can charge up that battery, then you can drive at night as well. So the question then is, well, how long would it take to fully charge that battery? So let's say we have a 75 kilowatt hour battery. We're able to charge at a rate of 12 kilowatts. Well, in the perfect world, we could charge that battery in just 6.25 hours using the surface area from the top covered in solar panels. This all sounds great, right? But this is an idealized world and that is not realistic. So there's some other things we have to take into consideration. So the first thing we need to think about is not all of that solar energy is actually making its way to the Earth's surface. So about 22% is reflected by the Earth's atmosphere and reflected by things like clouds. Uh, about 23% is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. And then about 55% of that energy actually makes its way and hits the surface. So we've only got 55% of that 1.36 to actually use. And then solar panels actually have theoretical limits in efficiency as well. We don't get all of that energy. So the theoretical efficiency limit of a single junction, meaning a single layer solar panel, the common ones that you see on houses, uh, the theoretical limit for those is about 33 
0.7% efficient. Uh, if you were to have infinite layers with normal sunlight, that theoretical efficiency goes to 68.7. And if you were able to concentrate that sunlight with infinite layers, you'd get 86 0.8%. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to say we're going to have a single layer solar panel that we're going to be using on our car, meaning we have a maximum efficiency possible of 33.7%. So remember, that means we're getting, you know, 55% of this is actually making its way to the surface. And then of that, only 33.7% max is what we're actually able to use. Now, another problem we have is that the Earth isn't flat. Despite what you may see in some places on the internet, uh, there actually is a curvature to the Earth's surface. And this is unfortunate for solar because if you think about a car that's here, you know, it's driving along at this point on the planet, well, then it's perpendicular to the sun's rays. And of course, it's getting lots of solar energy. But if that car is driving up here and the solar panels are pointing up away from the sun, well, then it's not getting much energy, right? So you have to take into consideration the total area of the Earth's surface and get an average of that. So if you're just looking at a cross section of the Earth, that's pi r squared. But if you're looking at the hemisphere that's actually having sunlight hit on it, that's 2 pi r squared. That's your area of that hemisphere that's, you know, visible for the sun that that sunlight is hitting. And so you have to take that average. So instead of 1360 watts uh, per square meter, you actually just have 680 watts on average per square meter. And of course, on the other side of the Earth, you don't have any sunlight, right? So if you're to take the total average of the Earth's surface area and consider how much energy you have hitting it at any given moment, well, the average over 24 hours, you know, on that one spot on the surface is going to be about 340 watts. So we have three things that we have to take into consideration. Consideration. So let's start with this first example here. So our theoretical, we've got 1360 watts. Uh, then we have to multiply that by how much is actually hitting the Earth's surface, 55%. Then we have to multiply that by our limiting efficiency, 33.7%. And that gives us about 250 actual watts that we have to use. Uh, so that's with our flat Earth idea here. If we use a, a real model of the Earth, well, that's gonna cut that in half, so 125. And if we're talking about you know, a 24 hour average cycle, then in any one spot, you're getting an average of about 63 watts of power from the sun per square meter. So let's go back to our Tesla that's covered in solar panels and plug in some more realistic numbers. So we've got our 8.7 meters squared on the surface of that Tesla. We're going to say that about 80% of that can be covered in solar panels. Of course, you've got to have like glass and windows and things to look out of. So you can't cover the entire surface. Let's say we can cover 80% of that surface. Uh, let's say our charging efficiency for our battery is 85%. And let's say we have ideal sunlight. So we're sitting at this point on the Earth surface, you know, the perfect spot getting all that sunlight right in there. So 250 watts. Uh, what is our power that is, you know, coming on to the Tesla going into that battery pack? Well, it is just 1.5 kilowatts. And if we're to take an average over a 24 hour cycle on any given point in the earth using this 63 watt number, well, then that means our actual average uh, power here is 0.37 five kilowatts. That's the amount of energy uh, that we're getting, the power that we're getting from the sun. Uh, so not very good, right? We were talking about 12 was like this magical number just based on its surface, but realistically it's going to be somewhere in this range of 0.375 to 1.5. So what is our driving speed that we could theoretically drive at forever if we were getting this much uh, power from the sun? Well, unfortunately, it is just uh, about 19 kilometers per hour or about 12 miles per hour. And that's using that best case 1.5 kilowatts of power hitting the car. Uh, so not good. And then if we look at charge time, of course, this is going to take more than one day. So we have to use our average, you know, where we have to look at both sides the average total uh, power being 63 watts. So if we take our 75 kilowatt hour battery pack and we divide it by our charging rate, which is 0.375, that gives us 200 hours or about 8.3 days. So 8.3 days to fully charge the car. 
Now that might not sound terrible uh, if you rarely drive and your car just sits out in the sun all day, uh, but if you actually use your vehicle on a regular basis, uh, it, is, it is not possible uh, that you to, to get by knowing that it takes 200 hours to charge that thing back up uh, when you know you can have uh, you can go to a Tesla supercharger and do that in 40 minutes. So you know, uh, quite a problem. Now, I was actually a bit surprised by these numbers. This was actually a little bit better than I was expecting it to be. I was expecting maybe it would take a month or so to charge your car, and it's actually not that long. So uh, that was slightly better than I thought, um, but it also does tell me you know, why it isn't really done, because of course solar panels are expensive, and how much value do you actually get out of it? Well, it may not be that much in a vehicle uh, that is this size and requires a significant amount of energy to move around. However, I found a car made by Aptera Motors, not yet, made today, but they're planning on producing this vehicle. Uh, and the specifications are pretty wild, and they say that you'll never have to actually charge it, depending on how much you drive, uh, because it will get all of its energy from the sun. So the specifications of this car are pretty impressive. A range of about 250 to 1,000 miles, depending on the battery pack uh, that you choose. Zero to 60 in as low as 3.5 seconds, over 100 mile per hour top speed, drag coefficient of just 0.13. This is really the big driving factor of how they're able to make solar power work and then uh, the heaviest version with the 1000 mile range and a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack weighing about 2200 pounds so sometimes with these cars i think the part of the thinking of why they won't be very popular is that they're small right and then safety becomes a concern you can have a very safe structure uh, but if something that weighs 10,000 pounds hits something that weighs you know 2000 pounds uh, then then you you tend to lose that fight um, but that said like this is you know a little bit heavier than a Lotus. Uh, this is in like Mazda Miata weight territory. So if that's something you're comfortable driving, uh, then this is potentially something uh, you could be interested in, uh, you know, from a safety standpoint. I feel like it, the safety isn't as questionable as I thought it might be once I saw it. it actually does have a decent weight to it. So what's the theory behind this never charge? Well, they say they have three square meters of solar panels on the car, good for up to 700 watts. And the real kicker of why this is possible is they say their driving efficiency is about 100 watt hours per mile. Now on a Tesla, that number on a Model 3 is maybe 250 watt hours per mile. So we're talking significantly more efficient, uh, you know, two to three times more efficient as far as driving down the road versus a Tesla because it has a small frontal area low drag coefficient. Now, they say the solar panels on the car are good enough to give the car 40 miles of range each day. So that, you know, if we're getting 40 miles of range each day and we know our efficiency is 100 watt hours per mile, then that means our solar panels are charging, giving the battery 4,000 watt hours of energy each day. And so that's about 14,000 miles, a little over 14,000 miles in a year that you could drive for free, that the solar panels are going to take care of all of that energy. So I wanted to do a little fact checking and see, you know, does this math actually work out? And so going back to our 63 watt number here being the average of wherever you are on the planet uh, in a given day, how much energy you're going to get from that solar panel. So if we have three meters squared of solar panels, which is what they state, multiply that by our 63 watts per meter squared, and we've got our 24 hours in a day. Well, that gives us about 4,500 watt hours in a day, which again, so we need 4,000 at the battery. This is saying 4,500 at the, uh, you know, the solar panels. So if you had an 89% charging efficiency for your battery, the math actually checks out. Uh, so I have no doubt, you know, in certain locations uh, on the planet, Planet where you get lots of sunlight, this actually probably does make sense, which is pretty neat that it's actually, you know, feasible to have a car that you don't, if you don't travel all that much, you know, 40 miles a day or so, uh, that you, you have free energy and, and you just drive uh, as much as you want without ever having to plug the car in to charge it up. And then if you do need to charge it up, well, you just plug it in to charge it up. So I think that, you know, it's pretty interesting. So either a car that has lots of surface area, which is the challenge, right? Because then it's going to be really big. So it has to be long. Uh, lots of surface area means you get enough power to do things. Uh, but usually that means the vehicle is going to be too big and have, you know, high energy consumption. So if you're able to get a really low energy consumption like this Aptera Motors, uh, we'll see, you know, if it actually comes out what it actually is capable of. But if you're able to get that number down really low, and have a decent surface area on the vehicle, then perhaps it actually is theoretically possible to have solar powered cars. 
Who knew? I think that's pretty cool. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.